Hello, I'm Kathleen Wall here at Plymouth Plantation. As the colonial food waste culinarian, I get to do all kinds of research into 17th century English food. And today we're going to do a recipe of Indian pudding, which is a great combination of English food and native food, and it's still good today. So in order to make Indian pudding, uh, we have to get the pan ready um, because we're going to be cooking with a lot of milk. So we're going to rinse the pan out in cold water so it doesn't scorch to the bottom of the pan. So now we're going to add the milk. And then the molasses because Really, Indian pudding is cornmeal, milk, molasses, and a little bit of spice. And it all just cooks up for a long time to become something really, really good. Now, the real problem with Indian pudding is it's not a very attractive food. But it tastes so good. And if you could smell it, then you would know how really good it is. So molasses and now um, a little sugar, just because molasses isn't sweet enough. And for spices today, we're using cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. So now we're gonna put this on the stove and bring it to a boil. And just kind of whisk that together. Traditionally, this was made with flint corn, um, but any cornmeal that you can buy in the market will work just fine. And so we've kept some of the milk out and we're gonna add the cornmeal to this and whisk it all together so that it doesn't lump up in the pan later on. And the cornmeal now can absorb some of the cold milk and it will start to swell before we put it in with the warm milk and then it will just cook up nicely. If you don't um, take good care of the cornmeal at the beginning, it gets very gritty. Um, so you don't want it to taste like a mouthful of sand. And while this is heating, I'm also going to add a half a stick of butter. All right. When you make this, you want to start with a pan that seems a little bit larger, a little bit too large, because when the milk heats up, sometimes it swells up. And so you want to give yourself um, a place so it has room to expand. You don't want it spilling out all over your stove. Indian pudding isn't something they had at the first Thanksgiving. Um, be though they had cornmeal, they didn't have very much milk. The first cows didn't come to Plymouth until 1624. Um, but by the 1650s, there were uh, lots of cows in New England. Uh, it was a very um, good country for raising cows. But it was molasses that makes the Indian pudding. And you don't see molasses in New England until you see the sugar trade take off in the Caribbean. So when the English become involved with the sugar trade in the 1640s, 10 years later, molasses and rum, which are byproducts of sugar making, show up in New England. New England fishermen were catching cod and salting it and sending it to the Caribbean. And in exchange, they got molasses, which was cheaper than sugar, and they got rum. So you want the milk to heat up. It's gonna look almost curdled when it gets good and hot. And that's okay, because when you add the corn to it, and you'll be whisking that in, and that'll smooth it all out. Right now it's starting to look a little curdled, and that's, that's the sign. So now we'll add the corn. And now we're gonna be whisking this for 20 minutes. So it's been about 20 minutes, and this uh, cornmeal is getting nice and thick and the color has changed a little bit, and these are all signs that it's cooking up really, really well. Um, and it smells fantastic. Um, now, I've been using a whisk in this. This is a round bottomed pot, and so the whisk fits into the sides. But if you have straight sided pot, you might wanna use a rubber spatula so you don't get anything sticking in the edges. 
Because um, if you scorch the bottom of this, because you do want to be careful with the heat, the whole thing's going to taste like it. And um, so we're just going to pour this in here. You can see how it's all together. You can't see any separate bits of corn. And you still have time to change your mind if you want to add raisins or cranberries. So you can put them in right now. There we go. Now, at this point, you can also uh, let it cool a little bit and put plastic wrap on top of it and have the wrap directly on the surface of the pudding. And you can put it in your refrigerator and hold it for up to 24 hours. So uh, you can, uh, now that it's in your container, you can uh, put it in a 350 oven for two hours and that will bake it and it will be firm and good. If you want to cook it in your microwave, um, put it again in your grease container, uh, put it in your microwave for three minutes, stir it, um, and repeat at three minute intervals for a total of 12 minutes. And if it starts to splatter, you can put a paper plate on top of it so you don't get Indian pudding all over your oven. Um, and the textures come out a little differently um, in each way. Uh, I find that it's firmer in the slow cooker than it is in the oven. Um, and in the uh, microwave, it's more like a traditional hasty pudding. And here are our finished Indian puddings. Uh, so this is Indian pudding cooked three ways. This was the, the pudding that was baked in the oven, the traditional way. And you can see there's um, a little bit of a crust that's formed on top of it. Um, so it's nice and firm. This is the Indian pudding cooked in the microwave. And because you stir it constantly, it has a looser texture, more like a traditional hasty pudding. Um, so, and, and that's very nice too. This is the Indian pudding cooked in the slow cooker, and um, I had added cranberries to this. And it's, um, well, it's, I think, the best of both worlds. This is my favorite. Um, it's firm around the edges, but it's still um, nice and soft in the middle. Now, I have told you that Indian pudding is not the most attractive dessert in the world. Um, but if you put a little cream on it or a little uh, vanilla ice cream, it's very good. And um, you can reheat it in the microwave, um, put a little milk on it, and eat it for breakfast the next day, which is my favorite way of eating it, if there's some left over. Um, or you can put whipped cream on it as well and eat it cold. So Indian pudding cooked three ways and served three ways. Enjoy.